KFC was once considered the epitome of a successful fast food chain. Competitors could only dream of replicating the magic that KFC possessed. However, the market landscape has changed over time, and KFC is not as popular or well-liked as it once was. Financially, they have faced challenges and experienced declining performance. One way to gauge this decline is by observing the diminishing number of KFC locations throughout the United States. It's difficult to determine the definitive peak of KFC's success. In terms of sales and locations, it would be around 2004, while the 1970s matched their dominance in market share. From a perspective of quality and customer satisfaction, one could argue that KFC's prime was when the Colonel himself was in charge before 1964. The evolution of KFC is a significant story in the realm of fast food. In today's discussion, I'll be shedding light on the rise of KFC and key factors that have contributed to their decline. The initial owner of Kentucky Fried Chicken was none other than Colonel Sanders, a charismatic individual who led a remarkably eventful life. At the age of six, he started cooking because his mother worked two jobs to provide for the family after his father passed. When Harland turned 12, his relationship with his new stepfather deteriorated, leading him to drop out of school and venture out on his own. Initially, he found work as a farmhand, but this was only the beginning of his journey through an array of diverse occupations over the course of the following two decades. In 2029, he took a significant step in his entrepreneurial journey by opening a gas station in Kentucky. Within this gas station, he ingeniously transformed a storage room into a dining area, where he began serving customers his delectable chicken and vegetable dishes, accompanied by the famous biscuits. The food quickly gained popularity among patrons. The following year, as he turned 40, he expanded his venture by establishing a restaurant and motel with a seating capacity of 142, marking the true beginnings of what would later become Kentucky Fried Chicken. By the 1950s, Colonel Saunders had shifted his focus towards expanding his concept and franchise opportunities. In 1952, he opened the first franchise location in Utah. Within a mere four years, he embarked on a full-time journey across the country, tirelessly advocating for individuals to open their own KFC restaurants. Prospective franchisees were enticed by the recognizable red and white stripe theme adorning the restaurants, the perfected signature recipe consisting of 11 herbs and spices, and the branding that incorporated his distinctive appearance. At this point, Colonel Sanders himself had become more iconic than the restaurants, serving as the face of the brand. This concerted effort led to the chain's rapid growth, boasting over 600 locations nationwide, before Colonel Sanders decided to sell the business in 1964, when a group of investors acquired KFC for $2 million and offered him a generous salary of $40,000 per year to continue serving as the face and ambassador of the company. Colonel Sanders' responsibilities included traveling, making public appearances, and generating excitement for the brand. Under this new ownership, the expansion of KFC accelerated even further surpassing the Colonel's own efforts. Within just six years of the ownership change, by the end of the 1970s, an astounding 3,400 KFC locations were in operation. This exponential growth positioned KFC as the largest fast food chain in the United States, surpassing even McDonald's. They had a significant advantage in nearly every market, particularly within the realms of chicken restaurants. Many of their current competitors did not even exist at that time. However, as time passed and the industry became increasingly competitive, KFC encountered difficulties in maintaining its position. Despite their initial dominance and vast number of locations, they struggled to keep up with emerging competitors in the fast food industry. The evolving landscape posed challenges that impacted KFC's ability to sustain its earlier success. One notable competitor that emerged in the 1990s was Boston Market, which gained popularity by offering rotisserie chicken. In response, KFC followed suit and introduced a similar offering. Another significant challenge came in 2013, when Chick-fil-A surpassed KFC as the highest selling chicken restaurant in the United States, despite offering fewer locations. In 1971, KFC was acquired by Hubline for $285 million. 
Hoblein, known for producing popular alcoholic beverages like Smirnoff Vodka, continued the trend of expanding KFC's presence. By the 1980s, the number of KFC locations had reached almost 6,000. It became evident that expanding the brand by opening as many restaurants as possible was a primary objective for these two previous owners. However, this expansion often came at the cost of cutting corners. Quick, inexpensive, and easy food preparation methods were implemented, compromising the quality of the food. Efforts to streamline production and reduce costs resulted in compromised food quality, affecting customer satisfaction and overall brand perception. Indeed, Colonel Sanders himself became vocal about the decline in food quality at KFC during the 1970s. He openly criticized the changes made to his original recipes, expressing dissatisfaction with the food served at the restaurants. He famously remarked, that's the worst fried chicken I've ever seen, highlighting his disappointment with the altered vision of his beloved dish. On another occasion, he referred to the gravy as horrible, comparing it to wallpaper paste due to its composition of tap water, flour, and starch. Additionally, when KFC introduced their extra crispy chicken in 1974, the colonel described it as a fried dough ball stuck on some chicken. These candid remarks led to an unsuccessful attempt by KFC to sue Colonel Sanders for his statements. These incidents indicate that certain compromises were made to the menu, impacting the quality of the food. Furthermore, KFC faced challenges with their menu diversification efforts during that period. They strayed away from their core product of fried chicken, losing sight of their identity. Instead, they placed emphasis on other items such as spare ribs or roast beef, neglecting their primary offering. In the late 1960s, KFC even ventured into starting a spin-off chain of restaurants called Kentucky Roast Beef, which gained a fair number of locations before eventually shutting down. The combination of compromised food quality and menu diversification away from their core product contributed to the challenges KFC faced during that time, further impacting their decline. In 1982, KFC, along with Hubline, was acquired by R.J. Reynolds, the largest cigarette maker in America at the time. R.J. Reynolds had been expanding into the consumer foods industry, having acquired Del Monte a few years earlier and later acquiring Nabisco. However, after a brief four-year period, they sold KFC to Pepsi for a hefty sum of $850 million. This acquisition made strategic sense for Pepsi, as they had already acquired Pizza Hut and Taco Bell, and adding KFC to their portfolio seemed like a logical move. It's worth noting that KFC switched from selling Coca-Cola products to Pepsi products following the acquisition, aligning with Pepsi's beverage offerings. With Pepsi's ownership, the expectation was that they would introduce successful new menu items to KFC, similar to what they had accomplished with Taco Bell and Pizza Hut. Significant investments were made, including the establishment of a dedicated complex for KFC's development. However, despite these efforts, the anticipated success did not materialize, and KFC faced challenges with introducing failed products during that period. In 1997, Pepsi spun off all its restaurants, including KFC, into a separately publicly traded company called Tricon, which was later named Yon Brands. Under the Yon Brands umbrella, various fast food concepts were acquired and sold, and co-branding initiatives were explored, with multiple brands operating under the same building. Despite these changes, KFC remains part of Yon Brands and continues its presence in the fast food industry today. One significant factor contributing to KFC's troubles has been their marketing strategies. The passing of Colonel Saunders in 1980 marked the loss of their iconic spokesperson. Few brands have such a strong association with a single individual as KFC does with Colonel Saunders. Even individuals who were not alive during his time still associate him with the brand. The challenge for KFC has been finding an effective approach to fill the void left by the Colonel's absence. They have attempted various campaigns, but none have been as memorable or impactful. In the 1990s, KFC tried to bring back Colonel Sanders in cartoon form. As more recently, they have enlisted different celebrities to dress up as the Colonel. In 2015, as part of a $185 million investment, KFC sought to rejuvenate the brand by reintroducing the Colonel through these portrayals. Comedian Daryl Hammond initially portrayed the Colonel, 
but later felt misled by the company as he expected to be the long-term spokesperson. Subsequently, the role was passed on to Norm MacDonald, Jim Gaffigan, Reba McIntyre and several others. These portrayals have been somewhat polarizing, as some perceive them as disrespectful. While they may have garnered attention for the brand, there is limited evidence suggesting that these campaigns have been particularly effective. Finding a marketing strategy that effectively captures the essence of Colonel Sanders and resonates with consumers has proven challenging for KFC, adding to their overall struggles. In 2009, KFC introduced their grilled chicken menu item, which gained popularity. However, the marketing strategy surrounding it was not well executed. KFC sent a letter to the United Nations UN, requesting recognition of a fictional country called Grilled Nation, consisting of the 60 million people who had consumed their new product. They even went as far as sending someone dressed as Colonel Sanders to the UN building, who managed to access restricted areas and interact with important individuals. This marketing attempt was seen by many as misguided and potentially disrespectful. Another incident related to their grilled chicken occurred when Oprah Winfrey promoted a deal on her show where viewers could download a coupon for a free meal of KFC's grilled chicken. KF fried chicken, here's what they're going to do for you. You're going to get two pieces of grilled chicken complete with two sides and a biscuit. The overwhelming response led to excessively long wait times and an inability to honor all the coupons, resulting in negative publicity for KFC. The health content of KFC's menu items is another potential reason for their decline. Kentucky Fried Chicken is generally perceived as one of the less healthy fast food options. As the public has become increasingly health conscious over time, particularly compared to KFC's dominant years in the 1970s, this shift in consumer preferences has had a detrimental impact on the brand. It's worth noting that in 1991, KFC officially changed its name to the initials KFC in part to distance itself from the unhealthy connotations associated with the word fried. The increasing awareness of health and dietary choices among consumers, along with negative marketing incidents and perceptions of unhealthiness, have played a role in KFC's challenges and decline. Following that, KFC made efforts to introduce health-conscious menu items, but they did not resonate well with customers. In the early 2000s, they launched a campaign promoting KFC as Kitchen Fresh Chicken seemingly emphasizing health. However, their attempts to position themselves as a healthier option faced challenges. In 2006, they faced a lawsuit concerning the high levels of trans fats in their menu items and subsequently committed to phasing out the use of trans fats in their cooking oil. Additionally, the introduction of the Double Down Sandwich in 2010, which used fried chicken instead of a bun, received criticism for its perceived unhealthiness. KFC has struggled to establish itself as a reasonably healthy choice. Another significant factor contributing to their decline is their reputation. KFC has faced issues with franchisee relationships, criticism from animal rights groups during restaurant renovations, and delays in updating their establishments. Their customer service has also faced criticism, which is particularly detrimental considering the high standards set by their main competitor, Chick-fil-A. In 1991, when KFC changed its name to the initials, a widespread rumor emerged suggesting that the name change was due to genetic modifications made to chickens, resulting in the creation of a new creature that could no longer be legally called a chicken. However, it is important to note that this rumor is unfounded and has persisted for decades. In conclusion, KFC's decline can be attributed to various factors, including struggles with health-conscious menu offerings, reputation issues related to franchisees and animal rights groups, customer service criticisms, and the persistence of unfounded rumors. It is worth mentioning that while KFC's performance has declined in the United States, they have found success in international markets, particularly in China, where they capitalized on being one of the first US fast food chains to enter the market.